guys, Strictly Candy and Sandwolves. Uh, I'm bringing you a video today. Uh, sorry, it's been a while. I'll do that. I'll do my reasons behind that in another video. Um, today I'm going to talk about how to handle a Kenyan Sandball. Um, the, uh, the different animals have different attitudes towards handling. Uh, Esmeralda has a little cantankerous attitude, so I'm going to go into that last. But I want to talk about how to handle a snake you're comfortable with. Now, this is going to go for in general of your of all Kenyan sand boas. You will want to. There are certain techniques that you can use that will tame them down quicker than others, but some will still have an attitude their whole life, uh, like that one. But so, but you, but it, it is possible to tame them down with the right handling techniques. Now, I got my little one over there who has been handled a lot as young as she as she is still young, so she is comfortable with just about anybody handling her. Uh, she's actually more comfortable with the camera lady over there handling her more than me. So she's gonna handle, she's gonna show you how to take her out, and then I'm gonna show you how to take Esmeralda out as she is a as she is slightly and more cantankerous and makes her uncomfortable. So I will pause the video here and we will flip sides. Okay, so as you can see, Buffy is actually uh, above the sand, so it's gonna make it a little bit more different, but the same technique will still apply. Um, and of course she looks really cruddy because she's in shed right now, as is Esmeralda, so we're gonna go ahead and let the little lady go, go ahead and dig her up. Now the way I taught them is completely different as to how other people would teach them. I usually pet them a little bit and uh, they'll usually just look at me or they will po uh, poke their head up above the sand and they'll flicker their tongue a little bit and then I can grab them and then they're completely fine. Okay, so here she goes. As you can see, she's completely comfortable. She's aware of her presence. And they will move around. They'll move around and they might try and disappear like she is now. But all you got to do is let them know. You, you pet them a little bit. You can pet them anywhere, just not on like on top of their head or anything like that. I don't like to do that. And she comes right back up because she knows what's going on. And you can generally uh, go from underneath her. Pet her a little bit, and then you can just pick her right up. Make sure she's got support underneath her, so with both hands. Just like that. And they will... Relax in no time. We'll of course, they'll flicker their tongues and everything like that. Hi, hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, hi, sweetheart. But they're generally very well behaved. Uh, she ha was handled a lot when she was really, really little, so she is more than used to being handled. I don't know why she likes to slither backwards. But, very easy, very... It's not too hard with a snake that has that has zero attitude. She looks really crappy right now because she's in shed, my poor girl. As you can see, she's very good. She, 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 she's a good girl. She loves her mama too. See, with me, all she does is move around and try and get away from me. She's like, don't touch me. And uh, and this is all you pretty much do is when they move around, you just make sure they have the support underneath them because they will get really, they do get scared if they don't have enough support and they will tense up and then they will start doing their whole jumping thing. Uh, Buffy doesn't do that anymore. I broke that habit when, when she was really little. Um, but you just want to make sure that they have the support under them so, so they're really comfortable. And they don't get st stressed out. Excuse me. A stressful, a stressed out snake causes a stressful owner, so we, we don't want that to happen. But you can see her behavior. She's tongue flicking, and it's a long, quick tongue flick, which means that she is, she is curious. She is mellow. 
There are different types of tongue flicks. You might see that with Esmeralda when I go to pick her up. Uh, short, short, fast tongue flicks are usually a sign that they are scared or they don't understand what's happening. Uh, but Buffy, as you can see, has that long, fast movement with her tongue, so it means that she's completely calm and she is relaxed. Um, the other day on my on my I got a comment saying, do they enjoy being handled? Now, I don't necessarily think they enjoy being handled, but I don't think that they tolerate being handled either. Um, they're comfortable with it, but I don't necessarily think that they enjoy it. Um, as you can see, though, it all, it all depends on the personality of the snake, too. Buffy enjoys being handled, especially by my girlfriend, Felicia. Uh, that's her mama right there so uh, she she definitely enjoys being handled by her so and uh, I taught her the same way I taught all my other animals I'd pet them uh, and then I'd go from underneath them and lift them up and then I'd put them on my hand and they'll mellow and, they'll, and they mellow out over time uh, sometimes it takes them a minute to do that um, it it probably took Esmeralda, what do you say, a couple months maybe. It took Esmeralda a couple months to mellow out, but she's okay now, I guess. She still gets an attitude here and there, but Buffy, as you can see, has no attitude at all. And neither does my male, Apollo. He has no attitude either. But he, and I bought him as an adult too, which really surprised me. She's trying to burrow. It's kind of funny. So as you can see, she's really mellow. She, uh, she definitely doesn't mi uh, mind being handled or petted or what have you. You can even boop her on the nose. She doesn't care. Yeah, she's very tame, very mellow, so we don't have to worry about her ever striking at anybody or jumping. So we'll go ahead and put her back. And the same way you put her back in as you, put, as you take her up. You just keep from... Underneath, and then just kind of pet her a little bit, and then you uh, just let her do her thing. I'm sure she'll take a drink of water as well, because she probably could use it. Yep. Now, ain't that a sight? We'll end on that perfect note right there. Alright, so the next segment will be me talking about how to handle in a more a more cantankerous sandbell. How to handle a more aggressive snake. She's not aggressive, she just has a different reaction to handling. Um, I trained her differently from her. I use my bare hands with Buffy, but with Esmeralda, I used a pair of gloves because I was actually uncertain that she would bite or not. But So we'll go ahead and put some gloves on. And uh, she is below the sand because she's in shed too, so, so she's going to be a little ugly looking as well. But she's still very beautiful. She's a, my flame girl, so this will be interesting. Alright, so I taught her the same way besides the gloves. You go in, you pet them, and they'll start moving around, and then there's a different trick to Esmeralda. And I'm going to show you that right now. What I'm going to do first, she already knows I'm coming in, so I'm going to take out her hide because I don't, because I think that thing it gets in my way when I'm trying to handle her. So, same way, I go in with my finger and I touch her. I know where she's at, she's right here, I made sure where she was. She's not moving around, which is getting me a little bit questionable here. What are you doing, big girl? So as you can see, she'll move around. As you can see, she's moving around a little bit. So I usually pet her for a couple minutes. Not, It's not anything major. Let's see if she'll poke her head up for us. As you can see, she's flattening. As you can see, she's a little bit flattened out. It means that she's a little stressed out. Actually, she, she might not be too... Too, uh, too, too bad today. 
Okay, so this is what I want her to do. So, so you see her head poking up right over there. That's what I want her to do. I want her to see me. I want her to know that I'm doing s s s something to her, but I'm not going to harm her in any way. Snakes, especially sand boas, are very, very sensitive to things from coming from above them. Now, when a sand boa gets upset, I hope we don't have to depict this today. But we might because she's huffing and puffing a little bit. But when a sand boa gets stressed or scared or upset with you, they do this sideways strike. And what that basically means is she will strike sideways. So, so my hand is over here. I'm going to go in and touch her again. And she seems okay. She's tongue flicking slow and fast, which is a little sign that she's a little bit upset. But I'm pretty sure that she'll be okay for today. Because she did this for me yesterday and she was completely fine. She's not tongue flicking anymore, so, so she's kind of... Okay, there she goes. But a sand ball will do this sideways strike. It's mostly a jump. They will not strike with their mouths open. Only if they actually are an aggressive sand, sand ball that do not like to be picked up at all. But Esmeralda is usually a good, she's been very good for me these past couple weeks. Um, she got back into her lunging habit, which isn't very good, but. So as you can see, I just pet her. And in a minute here, I'm going to ask my baby to back up because she might lunge, she might not. You never know with Esmeralda. Some, some, sometimes they're very, very, very unpredictable of what they're going to do. She's actually very soft right now. She's not hard. She's not tense, if you will. I call them hard, but they're not. She's not tensed up. She doesn't seem to be stressed out. So she knows what's going. She knows what's happening right now. So I'm gonna go ahead. So if you want to back up, babe, I'm gonna pick her up. She seems okay. So when she's in this position, just go from right underneath her like this and just hold her. So she's going to back up and she's going to try and get away from me for a couple minutes. It's because she doesn't like to be handled when she's in shed, but she'll get over it here in a minute. She did this for me yesterday, so there's no need to be no need to be worried or concerned. However, with an aggressive animal, you do want to move a slightly slower than usual. Because they do, because a jumpy sand boa is not exactly a, a pleasant thing to deal with. Uh, my girlfriend will tell you about that in another video. But as you can see, she's completely fine. She's a little, she is a little unsure of what's happening right now. Um, but she's okay. She's, as you can see, she's completely fine. And I was actually hoping that she'd get a little jumpy today. But obviously that didn't happen. Now did it, girly? Hmm. But one thing you can't do with an aggressive animal like this is move fast. She's backing up. <laughs> Baby, she's okay. She's okay. Come on. Just slow. That's all. As you can see, she looks really cruddy too because she's in shed. There's the tongue flex I'm looking for. As you can see, she's completely fine. She's very she's very mellow now. Um, I, I can completely trust her now. She I, I, I've always trusted her not to bite, but... She's a jumper, that's for certain. But see, she's okay. She's she's definitely growing. She weighs 110 grams, but I'll give you guys an update on the sand bows in another video. You can come up here. It's okay. But you just want to supply them with a lot of support like this. Her butt's hanging out a little bit, but that's all right. But she's, she, she's completely okay now. Um, As long as she knows, you got to let them know. That's the key thing to handling a sand bow. You have to let them know that you're not trying to harm them. And going from underneath a sand boa is really important because all their predators come from above them. So that's one thing you guys have to remember. All their predators come from above them. And as you guys can see, she's fine now. I can go ahead. And with the glove training, if, if you don't trust them at first, you can use the gloves. But as you start to trust them more, you can take them off. But they're going to be used to the glove training, which will mean that if you go in there with bare hands, they're not going to be certain of what's happening. It could be a predator for all they know. But just pet them, 
like you would if they're in their enclosure. She's adjusting her jaw, as you guys as you guys just saw. I don't know what that's about. She does that a lot. Are you rearing up to bite me? Is that what it is? Hmm? So do you think I could put you on my bare hand now? And take off the other glove or what? Yeah, she's a good girl now. I can pretty much do whatever I want with her now. Um, Felicia does not... She's a little questionable around Esmeralda, but I think after today she'll understand a little bit more that she's completely fine now. Um, I think her deal was she was always hungry, but... Yeah, that's how to... T that's how to handle your sand boas. Basically, you just need to go from underneath them. You need to pet them. You need to let them know that you are coming around them. Because if you just go in there and grab them, then they're, they're going to think that you're a predator. You're trying to kill them. You're trying to eat them. And then they're going to do defensive mode. Um, see? She's completely fine. She was un almost unhandleable. Slowly, huh? She was almost unhandleable when, 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 when I first bought her. She's not doing any tongue flicks, so sometimes that gets a little questionable, but she's okay. You know, it's it's part of taming a snake. They're going to be... Are you... Is she adjusting again? A little bit. Yeah. She is... T the part of taming down an aggressive... A uh, more aggressive snake is... Having to get through... Their dam. Through their defensive. Through their defensive postures. Why are you adjusting your jaw? That makes me a little uncomfortable, girly. Um... Probably because she's in shed, so that would make sense. Um, she's okay. But another thing I want to mention is do not let them win. You can't let the snake win the battle. Because when you let the snake win, they realize that they're going to have the upper hand on you. And they're going to constantly do their defensive posture, their defensive mode. Everything like that. I'm just speaking for all general snakes now. But to the Kenyans, their defense is different. They, at least she, she likes to flatten out. She'll flatten her body, about half of her body, from her midsection down, down to her tail, specifically she'll flatten out. And she'll do her sideways strike. Her sideways strike is she'll be like this at one point, and then she'll lunge like that. That's how they strike. You can't let them win the battle. I've done that one time with, 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 with her, and that's actually when she struck at me mouth open. Um, you can't let the snake win the battle, strictly because when you let them win, they feel you're going to have the upper hand on you, and they won't. And that when you do go in there to handle them, they're just going to immediately do their defense, and then you'll get, and then they'll get left alone. Just go in there. You might have to take bites here and there. Just go in there and get them. Go in there, do your, do your, um, that's what I'm looking for. Do, do your routine of letting them know that you're there. And if they get defensive, keep doing it. Don't let them, don't stop and give up. Just keep doing your thing. If they jump, they jump. Or if they strike, they strike. It's going to happen with some snakes like that. As you guys saw, she did absolutely nothing. That made me uncomfortable for she did all the good signs and that's why I was able to go in there and pick her up I know she wants to go back she keeps on looking at her cage so she wants to go back but as you guys can see she's not tense she's actually very very comfortable so you can push on her and nothing happens and then like it's not stiff She's tongue flicking, which means that she's a little curious, but she is very um, lethargic because she's very karate looking. She's in shed right now. But she's a good girl. You just have to get past the whole, I'm going to, I'm going to warn you, uh, uh, I'm warning you to stay away from me. As long as you can get past that, they'll be completely fine. They'll be tame in no time. And I think I'm actually breaking ice with this one, getting her tamed down. Now, I don't know if it's because she's in shed and that's why she's being so calm. 
but we'll see after she gets done shedding if she's going to be the same way as she was. So that's all I want to say for today. Um, in my next video, both of us are going to be in front of the camera doing a care video. Of course, I'll be holding her, and then she'll be holding Buffy unless she wants to switch. We'll be doing a care video together. We'll be we'll each be talking about a certain subject. Uh, that should be coming pretty soon. By next week, I'm pretty sure it'll come. So, uh, this is uh, Strictly Kenyan Sambos with my camera lady. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.